Hello again, everyone. It is your Black Knight. Yes. Hey, how's it going? Long time no see. Hey, listen. What you're looking at here tonight... I assume you're looking at this tonight. I don't know why. This morning, this afternoon, this lunch period. Whenever you're looking at it. What you're looking at here is my first attempt at transform races. And, you know, a couple things to note here. I am doing this with one hand. When I was do doing this race, I was actually trying them out. And, uh, of course... My uh, younger son would loves watching this. The car is bounce off of things and go all over the place. He loves watching the races. So I was holding him on my lap while we're doing this. And so that means I need one hand around child. The other one bouncing all over the keyboard. And, you know, that works out great with cars and motorcycles. That's, you know, boats. No problem there. You lose a little bit with boats because you can't lean back. Motorcycles is an issue, although I use the Shotaro usually, so it's not an issue because it doesn't really matter which way you lean. Once you start getting into airplanes, um, you can you can get by with airplanes, but you can't get by competitively because you can't use the afterburner and just or, or turn up the uh, the throttle all the way because you just can just control where the plane's going with one hand. Helicopters, forget about it. You're completely lost. And, uh, you know, oh, and the uh, oppressor bikes, yeah, same kind of deal there. You can't really function with an oppressor bike very well with one hand. It just doesn't work out all that well. And if I, if I get a chance, I think I have a clip I might throw in here of, uh, of the one race called Inferno where you get to be the beast for part of the transforms. And I was one-handed in that one, too. And that I actually had to put the kid down. Like, look, you have to hold on here for a minute because I can't jump high enough to get to the next point with us we'll just stare at the screen together all day long and so i think he took off and then you know did something else i forget he was he went in the room with his mom so he was safe i mean you know we didn't we didn't i didn't leave him off into the street or something i mean you know it wasn't like you know he was unattended I, it's just uh but that was what's going on but at any rate so when you're watching this race you'll be able to see when i actually would eventually uh Eventually, my kiddo got bored and said, all right, let's go off and do something else in in the first part of this video where I can actually use afterburners with an airplane. That's about and there's and there's still some control going on. Then that's about the part where I took over. I'm still pretty terrible with helicopters anyway. So uh, that that's the one positive about these races that I, that I pick up is that it really requires you to master. These races require you to master all of your skills. You have to be able to fly and drive and boat things and do all kinds of things. And if you're just a particularly good driver, like a, a, a automobile driver, you're not necessarily going to do as well in these races. You have to be able to master everything if you want to come to this level of competition. Now, if you're coming to this level of competition and customs are turned off, then it is a skill on skills sort of thing. If customs are turned on, now this is true of any race, but most especially of this race, okay, these transform races, then it is truly money on money because the transform points, like it'll, it'll show you a motorcycle and it'll, it'll transform you into a certain motorcycle, but it's not like, oh, it picks your best motorcycle and then you get to use that. It picks... Um, whatever specific motorcycle is called out. So if, let's say it's an Akuma. That was the, the case here. Um, if you don't own an Akuma, then you get a generic uh, Akuma. If you do own one, it pulls it from your garage. Same goes. There's a, there's one race where you have to drive an FMJ. Um, there's one with the, uh, the Ruiner 2000. And luckily enough, I have a custom Ruiner 2000. I'm like, wow, it actually pulls up, you know, the, uh, the Ukumobile here. And so, and it's a true of all the planes, it's true of all the boats. So, if you want a custom top-end vehicle for these races and throughout these races, you'd better have pretty much everything that they call out. And, you know, there's like three or four planes, a couple helicopters, uh, some very specific cars. Luckily, I do have a Zentorno. That, that worked out, you know, because, you know, it's nice to have a custom Zentorno. I don't have an FMJ. Don't have a Rocket Voltic. Rocket Voltic's another thing that comes up. Some of these are extremely expensive things. There's a race that you turn into a Wagner. So you're going to want your custom Wagner. That's That's got to be a huge edge. Uh, if you if you're if you're in a race and you've got the cars, you know there's. I don't think I have a single race where I have everything because they all involve an airplane of some nature, and I don't have any of the airplanes yet. I don't even have a hangar. 
Um, I've done a lot of uh, a lot of experimentation with this. I've been play actually. I've been grinding these enough that I can now get myself the uh, the vigilante, which I'm gonna try and get on Halloween. I'm not sure how well that's gonna work out because Halloween is Halloween. You know, it's like you come home. Actually, even before you get home, you're going to try and hit, like, you know, the Vigil Mass for All Saints Day. Then you go trick-or-treating with the kiddos. And then by the time you get home, hey, let's make a video. Might not happen. It might be time just to wrap things up and, you know, count your candy and go to sleep. But we're going to give it a shot. If not, then we'll do it sometime shortly before, uh, before the 6th. Because no one has said exactly what the situation is with the... Uh, the vigilante at the Batmobile. You would like to think it's not going to be a limited time item. I could, but you know, it's an interesting thing. They almost don't need to make it a limited time item to still induce the panic of a limited time item. Because all I have to say is, don't tell everyone that it's not a limited time item, and you get the same effect and without being an actual jerk about. If they make it a limited time item, that's just wrong. You know, this is going to be one of the most important and popular vehicles of the game. To make it like, oh, do you have $3.75 million right now? No. Well, then you can either give us money or cry. I mean, that's just not how you you do that. But if they do that, but they, they can do that. But what they're going to have is they're going to have the same amount of panic uh, just because it's coming out for Halloween as they, they would if it was a limited time item, because they have not said that it is specifically not limited time. And your rock star would call upon you to clarify that. That would be good. You, you'd ease a lot of people's minds. They're going to buy the car anyway. But, I mean, if they're, if they're looking for shark card monies... Yeah, and you got to remember, they never really specifically said that the Sanctus bike, which is, you know, a really cool-looking but mediocre-performing bike, so it's that's at least not, like, you know, a competition point here. Or it's, and you're never going to be in the free mode dominating the entire lobby in a Sanctus. It's not going to happen. People might go, oh, look, that's a really cool bike, and then kill you. But uh, that's what they did. That's just the only difference there is they just normally would just look at your vehicle and they'd just kill you for no reason. But um, but with a, with a, a Vigilante, you, you're a competitive force there at the bare minimum, especially if you have an MOC, which I don't, and... When I get this bike, I get this bike. When I get this car, it's, I'm gonna have like two grand left. I mean, I'm gonna be completely broke until, of course, we get that four hundred thousand dollars that you get for logging in before November six. So, I would say if you don't feel like playing right now, just log in, and log out, just get yourself four hundred grand. What the heck? Unless you got like seventy-five million dollars or whatever in game, then it's really not gonna matter to you. But since I'm not in that situation, I have. I've uh, been playing an awful lot of these games. Actually, playing playing a lot of the the level solo here while the double money is there, and grinding the money out to either four minutes for the ten grand or eight minutes for the sixteen, depending on what goes on, and try to make as much money as possible until I could get myself to where I could get that particular vehicle. It's an interesting thing. There's kind of a microcosm here of all the economics of GTA Online in these transform races. If you don't have lots of vehicles, then you're not going to be as competitive if the customs are turned on. If uh, if you're not doing these races right now, you might not have enough money to do uh, to get yourself that vigilante. It's, it is a really... I tell you what, right now it's the best way to make money. I mean, you can crank out $10,000 every four minutes. That's I don't know that you can do anything better than that. You know, maybe you can say, oh, well, import, export. Yeah, import, export until someone in the vigilante hits you with a rocket and then you lose all the time you spent, you know, potentially making 80 grand is now out the window. And uh, I would like, once once this is all is said and done, uh, I would like to get back to doing some import, export stuff, you know. Possibly even going back to the, the, the cargo crate things, not because uh, the missions are that great or the payouts are that great. But I would like to fill my office with strange and bizarre crapola, and that would be you know, the way to do that. So there's a plan down the line. But now, once I get this, once I get this vigilante, I'm actually probably going to take a little bit of a break because, first of all, I still haven't played anything uh, to do with uh, the new jungle update for TF2, and that's a big deal. I have to try, you know, rocket, you know, launching myself as a pyro here on people. You know, that's that's got to be something new and wonderful and interesting. Um, there's a couple things I want to do in, in Fallout 4, so I may, I may once I get the vigilante, 
uh, and I'm completely broke. I may wait until I actually get the money back so I have some operating capital. But we shall see. We'll see what goes on. I mean, can always just race a little bit and get some more money, but we'll get it. We'll cruise around in it, and then we'll park it. And we'll because I won't. I don't even have the uh, the MOC to upgrade the missiles. So my particular vigilante is going to be just the plain black, and it's going to have no, you know, just the plain machine guns. But here's the thing. There's there's this legend in the video gaming community of a video game called Polybius or Polybius, or Polybius, or however you want to call it, that supposedly existed somewhere in the Northwest for a little while. It's an old arcade game back in the early 80s that uh, people believed were part of the MK Ultra program because it used to make people sick or kill themselves, and all kinds of mind control things were going on. They said people became addicted to the game. And... Don't worry, it, it seems like it's a hoax. Nothing really exists about it before 1999. I'll put a link in the description for uh, some background info on that for you if you want to look at that up. But here's the deal. We say, oh, here's this really creepy story about a video game that was used, you know, the government was using video games for mind control. Now, I just told you I spent a whole lot of time playing GTA Online but I didn't really feel like it. Well, I'd really rather be playing TF2 or Fallout 4 because I want to get the Batmobile. And I'm worried that I won't be able to get the Batmobile. Well, that's not like, you know, subliminal message mind control, but they're controlling what I'm doing. I mean, you know, you could say, well, that's just good marketing. And what is good marketing except mind control? And it's one of those things where I think you got to be a little bit conscious of it. Like, I know I'm being jerked around. I, I want to get the thing, and I, therefore, you know, I'm, I'm willing to put the effort in. But it becomes work. It becomes, they've, they've turned it into work at that point. And uh, yes, we all go to work. I don't feel like going to work, but I like to eat. And so you can say, well, is that mind control? I guess on some levels, it's you know, it's 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 mind control. But I mean, it's not like it's you're turning your people into zombies, but you're manipulating what they're doing. And you know, all right, work is part of society. That's a, a justifiable way of you know, getting things motivated. This is a video game, you know. Come on, can't we make it a little bit easier to get some of these things? I mean, I realize that there's a whole economy, and that if you end up with too much money and you get everything, you get bored and you move on to the next game. That's that's a problem that everybody has to have, and uh, that everybody runs into here. All the game developers have that problem. They have to keep building the economy for richer and richer people. People in it so that they have something to do something to work towards but when it's something th like this all right if you're just gonna make yourself a tank that's really impressive fine do that when you're gonna make the Batmobile let me know what you think you think the Batmobile is fair game for a marketing push I mean not the Batmobile of course the vigilante because they wouldn't couldn't do a Batmobile that would be you know there'd be copyright stuff involved there <laughs> Not like the oppressor bike or the ruiner 2000 or any of the other stuff like that. I don't know how they do it. I really don't know how they do it. And I'm not being critical here. I'm just amazed. Um, on that note, enjoy the rest of the video. And uh, if there is any video, I imagine there's a more racing that goes on here. But I'm going to leave that to you all as bonus material that you can enjoy. But that's the end of my talk. This is your Black Knight. Have a great night.